The souls of the dead may be divided into the following two categories. A. Favored souls, those of pious believers, and B. Chastised souls, those of sinful believers and disbelievers. The souls of the second group are confirmed to places of chastisement and are too preoccupied with the torments of the grave to be able to meet or visit with each other. However, the blessed and favored souls of the pious believers are free to roam and meet. They may visit and discuss with each other their previous existence on earth. In the Barzakh, every soul will be with companions of like nature. In his book, Kitab al Ruh, Imam Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah, supports this view by bringing proof from the Quran and the Sunnah. He also relates experiences of various scholars regarding what they were informed of in dreams by the souls of their pious, departed companions. The following is a sample of a text whose statement is indirect in nature. Masruq rahimahullah reported, the companions radiallahu anhum said to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we must not part company with you in the world because when you die and are raised up above, we will not be able to see you. Then Allah the Exalted revealed the following verse in Surah Nisa, and whoever obeys Allah in the Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then they will be in the company of those on whom Allah has bestowed His grace, of the Prophets, the Biyin, the Steadfast, Affirmers of Truth, Siddiqeen, the Fallen, Shuhada, and the Righteous, Salihin, and how excellent these companions are. According to Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, this company or fellowship is established in the dunya and is resumed in the barzakh and in the hereafter. Man is with whom he loves in these three stages of the soul's existence. The souls of faithful believers join the messengers and prophets alayhi musalatu wassalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with the steadfast affirmers of truth, the fallen shuhada, and the pious salihin. This blissful fellowship is not restricted to paradise, but begins immediately after death in the barzakh. The following text is a direct reference to this point and clear proof that in general, the souls of pious believers are able to meet and converse with each other. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu an reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Verily the soul of the believer after death soars up to the heavens, whereupon the souls of other believers come to it, seeking news about those they know from the people of the earth. When the believer is dying, the angels of mercy come to him with a white silk shroud and say, Come out, content and with the pleasure of Allah upon you, to the mercy of Allah. So it comes out like the best fragrance of musk. They pass him from one to another, until they bring him to the gate of heaven, where they say, how good is this fragrance that has come to you from the earth. Then the souls of the believers come to him, and they rejoice more over him than any one of you rejoices when his absent loved ones come to him. They ask him, what happened to so-and-so? What happened to so-and-so? Some of them, the believers will say, let him be, for he was in the distress of the world. But he responds, so-and-so died. Did he not come here to you? They say rather he was taken to the pit of hell. When an unbeliever's death is close, the angels of chastisement bring him the coarsest cloth of castigation as a shroud and say, come out displeased 
and with Allah's wrath upon you and to penalty from Allah, the mighty and majestic. The soul comes out with a stench like the most unpleasant stench of a corpse. They take him to the gate of the earth, that is gate of the lowest heaven where they say how foul is his stench. Then take him to the souls of the disbelievers. The explanation of this is the deceased believers will ask what happened to so and so? What happened to so and so? Some of them the believers will say let him be. In a narration of Al-Hakim it adds until he has relaxed. Al-Tibi rahimahullah said some of them will say to others leave alone this new arrival. He has only just left the tiredness and troubles of the world. But he responds regardless so and so died. Did he not come here to you? They say rather he was taken to the pit of hell. In Majmu' al-Fatawa, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah stated, When the souls of the living are taken by death, they meet with the souls that have already died. And they ask the newly deceased about the condition of those still alive. They ask, what did so and so do? So the newly deceased answers, so and so got married. Or he is in good condition. And they will ask him, what about so and so? He responds, did he not come to you after his death? They reply, no. He was taken to the pit of hell. And the souls meet up. Those in the higher echelons descend to those who are in the lower levels of paradise. And those who are in the lower levels do not ascend to the higher echelons. In narration in Abi Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ said about the fallen shuhada, Allah puts their souls into green birds, which fly down to the rivers of paradise, eat its fruit, and nestle in lamps of gold in the shade of the throne. Then when they have experienced the bounties of their food, drink, and place of rest, they ask, who will tell our brothers about us that we are alive in paradise? and are given provision in order that they might not be disinterested in fighting and recoil from war. So Allah Most High answered, I shall tell them about you. So he revealed, and do not consider those who have been slain in Allah's path to be dead, rather they are alive, but you perceive it not. So they're alive in the barzakh, which is separate from the life of this world and precedes the life of the hereafter. What about the souls of dead meeting the souls of the living? Ibn Baz rahimahullah said, As for the meeting of the souls of the dead with the souls of the living in one's dreams, then I know of nothing that is authentically reported in this matter. However, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned that this is something that does take place. It is possible for the soul to meet each other. People have narrated plentifully regarding meeting the souls of those who have passed away in their dreams, which proves that these occurrences exist and Allah is all capable over everything. So the affair of the soul is strange, extraordinary, and exceptional. It is possible that while the soul is in Jannah, it is still able to meet with other souls in this world in dreams. And many people have narrated to me occurrences they have experienced in their dreams. From these stories is that a person informed me that his father had debts. So he saw in his dream another person who said to him, Indeed for me there upon your father such and such an amount, and for so and so that is such and such an amount, and for so and so that is such and such an amount. So the son went and asked each of them that were mentioned by name, whether what he dreamt was correct, and each of them affirmed that yes, it was all correct. So the point is that there are things that cannot be denied that indicate that the souls can meet each other in dreams. And Allah, the mighty and majestic, knows best. Furthermore, as reported in Sahih Muslim, the Messenger وسلم, said, The souls are like gathered troops. Those that were created to be acquainted with each other will come together. And those that were created to be averse to each other will oppose one another. So may Allah unite us with the righteous and the best of people, as He said in Surah Nisa. 
and whosoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, they will be in the company of those on whom Allah has bestowed His grace. Among the prophets, the truthful believers, the shuhada, and the righteous, and how excellent these companions are.